Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Doc, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed with your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach, and he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. And on the podcast today, I'm lucky enough to have the famous Kevin Gibbons again. Um, season two, we spoke uh, a good while ago now uh, on the podcast, at least. Um, hopefully, we've got a nice, nice amount of cool things to talk about now. How are you doing, Kevin? Yeah, very good. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me back. Well, I almost didn't have you back when we uh, <laughs> yeah. tried this the, the last time a couple of weeks ago, and Take someone two. decided to cut your internet cables up. <laughs> exactly yeah so, so for exactly for anyone who's been living under a rock for the last um decade um tell them uh, a little bit about yourself and resignal and you know um give them a bit of a rundown of, of of what you guys do as an agency yeah sure so um so i've been involved in seo myself since 2003 um i've run an agency called se optimize since 2006 and um, we became um, what is now ReSignal. Um, Eleven years ago, I think today, I got a work anniversary card for, uh, from our team this morning. So, um, so yeah, we're now into our eleventh year, okay. and uh, we we specialise in in SEO. And we made a call recently, maybe even coming up to close to twelve months, to focus exclusively on e-commerce as a as a key sector. So that's a big. Mm-hmm since we last spoke um and yeah we work with a great set of brands so the likes of asics fat face under armor um and continually looking to grow but specializing within um within seo as um as our at, at the core it's, it's good to have a focus and a focus within a focus is pretty good because you can command some some decent pitch decks there you know you really talk to someone's language so <clears throat> excuse me so Tell us about like some of the major changes in the last year with the agency. You know what what's what's had to be adapted. What what have you what have you been kind of consciously working on? Yeah, so I always thought of like about five answers at once of that. But I start with I think positioning has changed mm-hmm. um, in terms of what we're doing. Positioning sets the theme for quite a lot of agencies in terms of what do you say yes to, but importantly mm-hmm. what do you say no to as well, and. I think for us, that's then allowed us to say, okay, well, what do we want to be moving forward and how do we shape that future in the direction that we want to go? So the positioning piece for us, if I'm honest, it's probably still a work in progress, but it's something that we found our core specialism over the years has been working with e-commerce brands. um, And it's something that I think we're probably even going to get narrower on in terms of um, the types of clients that we work with and thinking about kind of like, how do we really add value? And I think the game's changed a bit in terms of agencies and their specialisms and kind of what you need to be able to bring outside of just SEO experience. Mm. And kind of that sector knowledge is, is key. We've bolstered the team in a number of new roles. I'd say my role's probably changed a bit as part of that as well. Um, but yeah, I think the, the big thing's probably positioning and then there's a number of things that we then implemented as part of that to really strengthen and reinforce who we are what we do and who we do it for so for those agencies that haven't got like a clear positioning at the minute um i know what the obvious benefits are you now know absolutely because you you're experiencing them what what would you say would be like a, a really obviously clear benefit of going down the potentially scary route of 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 niching into a position and getting that sort of the positioning bit is almost like you know i'm drawing my line in the sand and that's it so yeah. what, what would you what, what would you say would be a key benefit to that? Well, I'll start with a scary bit, which is you're turning away business and that's never mm. comfortable. And I remember toying with this years ago, back when I remember I got like AdWords qualified and everything else. I was kind of like, I need to know everything about digital marketing in order to make sure that we offer the yeah. services to our clients. And 
then I kind of had this realization. It took quite a long time, to be honest, of actually we, we should specialize on what we're good at and what we're passionate about. And for me, that was always SEO, like paid search. Right. Um, I got to a certain level where I could do it and do a good job. And we, we at times had a very strong team on, on paid search, but our core specialism was always an SEO. And I, I think we, we started to drop the ball a bit in some of the other areas and mm-hmm. I know a turning point, there's a couple of turning points. One was we lost a key client that we had exceptional SEO results for, but we were below power on PPC. And that mm. then made, okay, well, actually, if we specialize more in what we offer as a service, then we can partner with other agencies for the ones that yeah. um, do the other services. And then obviously we get the parts that we want. We give away the other parts that we don't want, but in return, hopefully we'll get more back that wouldn't have come our way previously. Yeah. Um, so that was scary because it meant that we were turning down money from a service that we used to offer. And now we are just focusing on one. And it's scary again when we then said, okay, well, over the years, we've always been very much B2C. So we've been travel, retail, finance, uh, our key sectors. Um, we do have a couple of clients that we still work with in financial services, um, do a very good job with. But we've made a call that moving forward, what we want to attract is the e-commerce businesses. Um, that's where, if I look back over the last certainly five years, that's where most of our experience has been. Um, travel faded mm. away during COVID um, and e-commerce exploded. And we just found that actually our track record is really strong. Um, if you look yeah. into kind of like moving into the benefits, the new biz pitch rate or win rate, if we were to pitch for an e-commerce business, our win rate would be much stronger because we've got really strong case studies of the likes of ASICs, Fatface, like Oka over the years, and like brands that show that mm. we've been there and done it for people like you in terms of kind of like similar brands. And that, mm. that goes a long way. Whereas actually, if you're pitching for a business that you haven't worked with before, I think we know very well that quite often what you deliver might follow a very similar yeah. framework, but it's not the same as having a proven track record that you've done it for someone else that's similar to that. And you know the inside you know, the kind of like the, the nuances of how things work. And mm. I think I mean, that's a, a big benefit. The other one I would say is just absolute focus. It means that then we can focus, certainly our marketing is around a core sector. We used to run breakfast events, for example, around travel, retail, finance, and they'd do one a quarter, we'd do one a month. And now we can focus that exclusively on e-com. Um, we made a big move earlier this year to actually say let's not just do breakfast events um and let's consolidate and we did increase kind of some of our spend on stuff like this as well but let's really focus on econ we run a 150 person conference um which which was brilliant you, you attended and it's very well received and it was stuff like that 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 i think if we were to not make that decision on positioning it would have been harder for us to say let's just run another seo conference there's there's great seo conferences out there already but i think what we could bring with this bringing together the specialism of seo and ecom really helped and with that we became more focused in what mm. we're doing um from a delivery perspective but also a marketing perspective of how we attract that small kind of uh more focused set of clients but yeah it does take a bit of a brave yeah. decision on knowing what you're turning away as well yeah and and I, I, I think like you can have all the internal discussions you like about it. You can make the decisions all you like about it. But that as soon as you you literally split the switch, which says instead of we do everything for everyone, it says we do this single thing for these single group of people to solve their problem. Um, yeah. That's when you're very clearly marketing. This is this is where you go now. Um, and. You know, if you'd have said that a few years ago about travel, you'd be in a different position where you'd say, okay, we changed our mind. Um, but if, you know, with e-com, you're, you're saying it with all of the knowledge you've got of e-com, you're saying it with all of the experience, experience and expertise, yeah. um, but you're also able to um, rely a little bit more on that as a future um, revenue stream because it's a little bit more resilient given the way the world is. Um, how do you think the how do you think the recent changes in the in the industry are going to affect ecom? Because I know that when this goes out, it'll be a bit le- bit after the brand new news of um, of um, uh, what's it search generative um, yeah. results, etc. Uh, what's it called? Search generative experience or something? I can't remember now what the acronym yeah. means. But 
Um, there's going to be impacts to how SEO works. There's going to be impacts to to how ecom works and things like that. How how are you guys looking at that, that emergence and sort of working on things around there? I should have. Kashal and our team has put together a deck on his thoughts about this that was shared just before this call. <laughs> That's a webinar we need to do. Which, which I, I probably should have looked at before this call as opposed to after it. But yeah, no, I, I think the idea is and that, that's probably a key thing is having people in our team that are both keeping up with the trends, but also experimenting with those trends and actually bringing them into use cases. And I think yeah. for us, it's very much we, we've got clients where we typically run kind of like QBRs, so quarterly business reviews with our clients. And we'll have a innovation roadmap in terms of these are things that we're experimenting and trialing with in terms of where we think things are going, um, where we can drive efficiencies, mm. maybe with technology. And there's some things that we're we're building out at the moment um, on that front. But equally, what changes with Google and the platforms? Because that's obviously going to have a yeah. big impact of if we just do things the same way that we've always done, then actually we're, we're missing a trick. So but equally, if you stop what you're doing and follow the latest shiny trends, Every time it changes, we we'll change direction every day. So it's yeah. picking the bets and the things that we think, okay, let's dig a bit deeper here in an experiment, but then blocking mm. time out to say, okay, let's let's draw some trends together and understand firstly where do we want to dip our toe in, and then secondly, okay, how is that working? What are the trends that we've learned, and can we do more of this? Yeah, and 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 being able to to have your focus and your positioning means that you can in a sense, discard some of the noise that the other areas are talking about that maybe will be tangentially connected, but not enough that you need to focus a huge amount of time on. Um, meaning, yeah. you know, you, the time you do spend is a lot more more valuable. Um, what's been something that, that you guys are, are kind of um, seeing change in the industry, like makeup of agencies and things like that? Because I know that I can see that there's a, um, after the hangover of COVID, there's there's certainly an awful lot that I think is changing in the dynamics and the culture in agencies. Um, what what are you what are you seeing as a leader? Yeah, it's an interesting point. I think for us, I think it's still kind of a getting used to. I don't know. They called it like the new normal at one point. I don't even know what stage we're at now. <laughs> um, but it's mm-hmm. it's kind of understanding what that looks like as from a client perspective of what our clients need from a team perspective of what gets yeah. the best out of our our team mm-hmm. we always had an office for example before um covid and we were quite flexible we did four day weeks that we'd actually just taken down to three day weeks but still kind of with core hours of needing to be in the office and since then mm-hmm. we've not just got rid of the office but we have a largely distributed team that's across the uk so actually having an office right now i'm not even sure where you would maybe we have more people in manchester than we do in london now (laughs) yeah it it, it wouldn't make sense yeah we'd if we had an office we'd have a mass walkout because like people would not be able to get there but equally it's not just about Mm. that it's about like i say what do our clients need and how do we do our best work and i think there was an agency i saw recently that have said that we're going back to the office and you need to live within a certain range or be able to commute in there and I read their justification for it and I actually thought it was very fair I think it's but I think it what works is one or the other I think you make a decision that we're going to have an office location people will need to be located relatively close um, in order to be in the office or we're remote and we embrace it I think the middle ground really doesn't work and I think the we'll go in two days a week or you can go in whatever day you you like but you go into quite an empty office or the i'm, I'm definitely not a fan of the uh it's hard isn't it yeah the, the the meetings where some people are in the room and some people are dialing in and everyone in the room is talking to a screen instead of each other and it's like stuff like that i just don't think works um but i yeah. i do think i do think if you're if you're remote and that's the way that we've gone and like i say not knocking having an office i think that we've done very well out of that in the past and there's benefits for it, but I think you have to make a call one way or the other. And I think everyone post-COVID was very much, let's try hybrid and figure out which way it takes us. Um, certainly, mm-hmm. if you had a commitment to a, a lease, then of course, you're going to try and use that um, in some way. But yeah, for us, it's been very much, we've got people in our team, like I say, Manchester, Cornwall, Birmingham, kind of Leeds, 
London, Oxford, Newbury. <laughs> it's kind of like it's it's very think, distributed yeah, yeah. in a way that means if we need, need to get need together, a, a converted van. You need a converted yeah, van yeah, exactly. as an office to drive around the country. <laughs> totally, but but it means we we can meet up as a team, and it's not too difficult, kind of to to meet, kind of. I don't know, yeah. once a month water or stuff like that. If you, if you need to be, like we've got clients in Amsterdam, if we need to be there and see them, then that's fine. We'll be there. But equally, yeah. we don't need to be together in a room five days a week. And yeah, but I, I think that's allowed us to tap open to more talent. So like I said, I think you have to pick your mm. position on it. But for us, I, I think we've certainly seen benefits from that call. Yeah. So over the last year, all of the changes that's been made in the agency, the successes that have come from it, where do you think you know, you've bit, you've gone professionally, personally? What what's developed as you, uh, in you as a as a leader? I think it's an evolution of the role. I've been very very much trying to build the agency as a system that works, and I, I found that I was a bottleneck, to be honest, like in the, in the past. And I think it's natural for an agency leader you reach a certain size i think yeah. most agency leaders might get to say a million turnover and run the show and i think that's quite common but i think beyond mm. that point it's then really tricky to you're, you're spinning too many plates and i think for us it's okay well i've never felt i'm the best person at new biz um client services again i think i can build strong relationships with clients and do good work. But again, mm. it's like trying to do everything operationally, culturally across the team. And I think for me, it's actually, I've put more work into stuff like our own positioning. Um, we have a great head of HR that helps to make sure we've got a really strong culture in our team. And we've built out a senior leadership team that again, it's fo- there's focus on new biz, client services, and kind of continuous pressure on each of those because they're they're really important. Whereas I think mm. in the earlier days, I did too much of that myself and I'd spread myself too thin and it'd be like, oh, we've got a great lead. I'm going to focus on this and let's win it. And then it's, we've got no leads. I'm going to focus on marketing. Let's fill the pipeline or this client, yeah, yeah. things aren't going that well. I'm going to step in and fix that. And it's like, you can't do that, not a scale. And um, yeah, I, I think now just building core competencies in all of those important areas where I can coach the team, but I'm not mm. the person with sole accountability. There's someone that is accountable for yeah. each of those areas of the business makes it so much easier. Absolutely. And speaking of leadership and accountability, um, thank you uh, for writing the foreword to the uh, Digital Agency Leader book from the OMG Centre, Control Alt Lead. Yeah, it will be available by the time this book goes live. Uh, this podcast goes live and um, uh, it was really interesting reading that uh, forward and when when anyone listens to the book please do head to the omg center website to download your copy um because uh just that one forward tells you an awful lot about the the journey that you've gone through as a leader uh kevin um and you know first of all thanks uh for writing it and second of all hopefully you enjoyed the the book itself um Probably Absolutely, not so yeah. as many lessons in there as uh, as as, as um, it may well be for others, given your um, path in the in, in so far. But um, thank you. Yeah, of course. And like I put in forward, I think it's. I almost wish there was more knowledge about this when I got started. I think I've learned from yeah, same mistake. <laughs> <after mistake. laughs> um, and um, this is this uh, is a book full of well worded lessons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. So sometimes you have to go through it, don't you, in order to learn it. It's yeah. like you can get told it, the right yeah. answers, but it doesn't mean you're going to do it. And I, I think it's useful, certainly, to have kind of a bit more theory and, uh, yeah, mm. a bit of a blueprint exactly. on how to do it. But exactly. equally, some of those hard lessons, there's there's no cheat code, essentially. It's like you've, no. got, to, you've got to go through it. The Leadership Konami code does not exist, listeners. Um, so, Kevin, <laughs> we're a year into the future. We're re-recording for our third time. Um, what's the core focus for, for you and ReSignal in the next year? Yeah, so I think there's certain things we're working on right now to get towards that, but it's, like I mentioned, our positioning, I think, might get even tighter in terms of the brands that we're we're targeting and working with. Certainly, I think for us, mm. we've always been kind of quite a premium SEO agency in terms of uh, the brands that we work with, and it will be continuing to grow across our journey. It's interesting to mention like we're um, into our 11th year now, but originally I remember having a vision for the company around kind of having 12 great brands that we work with and 20 mm. world-class team members. I think 
I think we're there at that point in time. I think we have achieved that. And it's now thinking about how do we take that to the next level? And there'll be some things around um, what we need to do. I, I still don't see us being an agency that has 50 clients. I think it's an agency that has a small group of clients that are kind of larger on the whole. And um, that's just the, the model that we work with. But yeah, there's certain areas that we'll build out with our our leadership team. Um, we're working on some technology that, again, is probably a bit too early to talk about right now. But yeah, in, in a year's time, <laughs> almost certainly, that's something that I would like to have seen, not just be built, but kind of being used and helping to drive efficiency and uh, strong work for our clients. So, so yeah, I think there, there's quite a lot we'll, there. We'll time the podcast like recording for the launch then next year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's fair. But, um, but yeah, it's some of it is more of the same and some of it is actually, like I say, kind of trying to use a bit of my time now. I've freed up um, some of the time in other areas for some of the bigger projects. So doing things like the conference, mm. I think it's really good fun. Um, and I think there's other things that we're working on. That there may be bigger projects than we would have done in the past. And it's it's nice to be able to focus on that as well. So, uh, so yeah, it's how do we move towards where we want to get to as opposed to just being kind yeah. of like, reactive to the day-to-day as well that's nice that's nice thank you so much for coming along again the second time kevin it's been great to speak to you yeah of course yeah no happy to be a part of it thanks chris and in our next episode we'll revisit another agency leader and see how their last year has been and thanks for listening (laughs) 